The decision to bring soft and super soft compounds to Korean Grand Prix has been called as audacious. Someone had even raised the possibility to of five pit stops. Eventually, all teams adopted a two-stop strategy on average, confirming your forecast for the race. It is not the first time something similar happens. How could you explain how such rumors uh, can ex uh, spread within the paddock? And how would you describe the performance of the two compounds on, at Yongam track? Well, it's certainly true that people were talking of um, five, uh, maybe six pit stops, actually. I mean, uh, I was talking with Sebastian Vettel on Friday morning when he came to the circuit and he came up to me and said, uh, how, how, how are we going to do this race? You know, will we need to use even the, the intermediate tyres, for example, at the end of the race to, to finish it? Um, I, I told him, no, don't be crazy, we'll be fine, and uh, it'll be about a three-stop race. So there were a few rumours that, that sort of started moving around, I think partly because of the, the lack of knowledge for the teams as well of the track. Last year they also ran in wet conditions and um, they didn't maybe gain as much information as they'd have normally for, for such a race. But uh, we were pretty confident that it was a circuit that needed a soft compound, a compound that gives you a lot of grip, uh, because it's actually quite a smooth uh, race circuit. Made worse as well at the start by being very dusty. You know, the first few uh, sessions we did on uh, Saturday when it was finally dry, we had a lot of dust on the circuit, we had graining, but um, we were finding the track was evolving very, very quickly and becoming uh, much quicker as the, the, the weekend went on. So getting to race day, um, we, we saw very quickly that the super soft compound, which the majority of teams started on, was actually lasting 15 laps, uh, plus the qualifying three laps the tyres probably had. So we felt it was going to last 20 laps, and at that point we already knew it was going to go towards a, a two or three stop strategy. Um, having said that, and there was the safety car, which guaranteed a two-stop strategy. But even in our worst estimations, we felt that no more than four stops would be necessary. Um, and that was only because uh, we had an unknown regarding the temperature, which was actually on the Sunday five degrees less than the, the Saturday test. Korea was completely unknown for you. Pirelli compounds had never touched the, tra the track before. How could you make your choice and what further data you were able to collect also facing next year's season? Well, we do a lot of track measurements. You know, we actually take um, moulding, if you want to look at it in a simplistic way, of, of the surface. And we then feed that information into our um, simulation models for, for each track, which takes into account the roughness of the surface. It takes into account the braking, the cornering. And we then end up with a, a wear simulation for all of our products. So we were, we were confident in, in the information we had. Uh, of course, there's a lot of variables involved that are harder to simulate. You don't know how dirty the track's going to be. And as I've already mentioned, it was very dusty, in fact, on, uh, on Saturday morning. And um, we found as well it cleaned very quickly during the race. 24 cars following the same racing line meant that the cleaning was, was much more aggressive than, than we'd anticipated. Temperatures were lower. Again, it's always harder to, to simulate the exact effect of temperature. So we have more information. We, we obviously believe we took the right solution because it was the race with, I believe, the, the least pit stops of the whole year, which, uh, considering the comments before the race, is uh, maybe a little bit surprising. At Yonga, we saw something very unusual during qualifying session, as Red Bull Racing team fitted their tyres inverting right and left once in order to have a better, even rear, and safe tyre sets. What do you think of this escamotage? Do you think we are going to see it again next races? Well, I guess that the real difference, or the bigger difference that they did, was actually use the, the super soft tyres, all three sets of the super soft. They did Q1 and Q2 with the same set of tyres. And um, that meant that they had an option, of course, in, in Q3 of either um, using one or two sets. In the end, they used two sets of the super soft. But it also meant they kept all of the soft tyres, which, um, judging by the information we had Saturday morning, uh, might have been a, a valuable consideration because the, um, some of the wear indications on Saturday morning were actually a little bit higher than what we saw in the race. And that meant that they would have had three sets of the soft tyre to complete the race. Will we see more of that? Possibly. Who knows? You know, uh, the teams, even at this late stage of the season, are still coming up with new ideas and new approaches. And uh, um, that, from our point of view, is, is excellent because it means that uh, despite them understanding clearly better our product, it means they still haven't dominated fully the, the situation. Next week, India Grand Prix will debut in Formula One. It will be a challenge for the teams, but also for you, having almost no data available for this brand new track. 
What kind of performance you expect from P0 tires? Well, India is, is an interesting track. You know, the layouts that we've seen are um, suggesting it's going to be an interesting circuit for, for us to be racing on. We sent a team of people over there about a month ago to take uh, measurements and mouldings of the track so we understand better what tarmac they've actually laid down. Um, so we have our own wear indication model for the race. But it's an unknown again. You know, it's not until you actually run cars on the circuit that uh, you can get a, a perfect idea of, of what they've done. But um, all indications are for an interesting race. We've inverted the choice of uh, compounds. By that I mean that they have six sets of the softer compound and only five of the hard. Uh, the reasoning for that was so that they could have, uh, the teams have more tyres to run on Friday, uh, the softer tyre. Plus we're taking a development soft tyre as well, which uh, they're going to get a set of to, to run on the Friday. So all in all, they're going to have three sets of soft tyres to run on the Friday and uh, one of the hard. Um, the reasons for that are that we believe the race will be actually run with the soft tyre. Being a new circuit, the more time they get with that tyre, the, the easier it will be for them to, to adapt. Now that both Drivers and Constructors Championship are already assigned, all teams are mostly focused on 2012 season. Is Pirelli going to strategically explore the next Grand Prix in the same way? Well, we've got, um, after Abu Dhabi, we have the Young Drivers Test, where we, we have actually asked the, the teams if they will be so kind to, to test some of the product for next season. Obviously, the advantage for them is that they, they get an early indication of what product they'll have for next year. Um, plus, of course, for us, it gives us a, finally a test on a current car, a 2011 car, so we can make a direct comparison with the tyres they've used this year. So, in, in part, yes, we are going to, to use the fact that the teams are experimenting. There are some tests, as I mentioned a young driver's test where we will try and uh, make the most of those uh, opportunities to prepare for 2012.